So this task today is to move the oil feed up to the top. So I need to slacken off all these bolts around here and then spin that car around. And then we'll also slacken these off so we can rotate this round as well. I need to take the turbo off to do that though. Okay, so these, these are now loose. So that allows us to now rotate the car around to where we need it so that the oil feed return point in the right position. Um, I'm leaving this loose and I will nip it up when I take it back up to the car because I didn't mark out where it needs to be. And to be honest with you, it's only a 30 mil spanner anyway. I just did it in the because it's warmer. Then I can slacken this side off and rotate that to roughly where I want it as well. And then I can start by reattaching all these bits, which is the oil return there. That's the restrictor for the feed and the two bits for the water pipes. And that means I can then get on with the jobs for today. Excellent. So that's now lined up with the feed at the top. And I've also slackened that off. So you can see it's not moving the car, it's just moving the Racking in. Something like that should give me enough to put a pipe on. Easy enough. Maybe a little bit higher there. Yeah, maybe like that. Wicked. So now we'll start putting the oil feed and return bits on. And the water pipes. I'm going to take the water pipes off down here. So we've moved more of the bracketry out of the way. So that should make it all a bit easier to get this down pipe and manifold in. Next thing we're doing is oil feed. Um, I'll maybe have to show you from underneath, but there's the pipe that I've got, and there's the adapter. So this just goes into your oil pressure switch. The switch goes in there, obviously, and pipe will come out that way, or whichever way around you want it. And that is down the back of there. Where on? Probably have to get that from underneath with the downpipe out. Right, so there you go. Oil pressure switch. I've unplugged it. That's the wire for it there. It's a 24 mil socket to get over it or spanner, whatever you want. But I'm going to put a 24 mil socket and loosen it from above, and then look at how that's going to work with my adapter and then the oil feed pipe. She's out. I had to really sketchily just sort of like, because I'm going to deep 24, so what I did was push the socket on. I think I did it on the ratchet about that much. I managed to loosen it, no bother though. Right, so now what we need to do is we need to get this adapter out, which is over here. Bought this from XO Racing. And then that there's going to screw into there. That's going to screw into the block, and the feed's going to come off of there. Side. end up with something looks a bit like that so you've got your pressure switch back on and your t-piece and your feed comes out hopefully that's gonna be long enough let's get this put back in the block i'll leave this bit off for now and put that one on once it's once the union's in the block turns out that wasn't an an4 fitting but that one is luckily i had um the other one came with one of those anyway i didn't realize we did probably should just use all of that never mind so Swap that out, and now we can attach this. It should be dead straightforward. That's just the cover, isn't it? Right, okay, so there you go. T piece, screwed in the block, low pressure switch there. That there should fit. Attach for all that. which I've removed so I think the next thing to do is to actually fit the downpipe back in well actually I should probably I've got some heat shielding what I might do is I might place it over here just to keep that all a bit safer and wrap these Decided to wrap those water pipes as well. Um, the down pipe sits very close to them. Um, I've got a big piece of metal shielding, which I'm gonna go and get as well. I'm gonna try and make a plate to cover there. So all of that isn't in any danger. I do have some heat wrap left, which I might wrap around that loom actually, just to help that as well. So 
I've had a little bit of a heat shield. Um, reused two of the original bolt holes in the bulkhead. That should just cover like the heater controls us a little bit better. Um, obviously the turbo is going to start to sit there, but I've got a blanket to go over that. And because I've now done oil feed attachment, which is down there, I can now put the downpipe and manifold back in and hopefully bolt it up properly. Makes a bit terrain, thanks. Um, the big problem with this is you can't actually see what you're doing. You can't see over the engine because it tips back. And you can't see in from the side. So you've got to kind of go blind and hope you get somewhere near. It's a bit annoying. Um, I'm tempted to actually get up and stand on the gear, but I don't think that's going to help. But yeah, so I'm struggling to get this manifold back in. Although there's more space now, but I have nipped the downpipe up, which is probably a mistake. Oops. So that's the old feed line, that fits okay. Um, might reroute it a bit better at the back if I can. Maybe along the back of the bunker. I said a word about it there. Uh, but it fits the turbo fine, so I like length. Um, I don't know if you can see down there, but can you? Might go upside down. But it sits maybe, maybe an inch off the manifold down there. Um, I can heat wrap that, so it shouldn't be too bad because I've got this. Uh, Got this seam and stuff here, which I can put around that pipe anyway, so that should help it as well. So that's that one. Um, I'm going to move on to the water pipes now, which I'm going to take off. If you look in there, so I'm going to take one off that side, one off that side, and then run them round into there. They're not too long, they're AN6 fittings, so they're not too bad. I've got lots of pipes for that. Um, and then I need to work out on the oil return, which I think is going to have to come off on a 45 and head back the way there uh, but I need a pan because I've got to take off the fitting there the cap that we put on underneath and drain the oil or as much oil that comes out before I put a AM10 fitting union on that and then that would be that complete really so that's good news and um, then I can bolt all this up properly I can but I can tighten the manifold up properly anyway that doesn't need to come off again so I've got to start my water pipes, I've got my AN6 fitting on there and I've marked up the length I want so I'm just going to chop it through there with a hacksaw um, This won't have a fitting on it, it'll just be hose clipped back onto the water pipe and then once I've cut through that, I'll start again use that to make the next one which leaves me loads spare which should be, I think that's the right size for the brake booster which is good This isn't the Teflon style, this is just braided um, It's just a water pipe so it'll be fine for that That's the first water pipe done. Um, it's got that nice little hook there, which means I can run a zip tie around that. Keep that nice and neat and tidy. And the second one, it's got to come out of here and I'm gonna to have to run it around there to avoid the gear linkage. Put that with a 45, so that now angles it away from the gear linkage, gear selectors, cables, whatever you've got. Pulls it around here. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cable tie those bits together there. And then if it runs up there, back into there. Now I need hose clips on these because these are knackered. I haven't got one in there anyway. But that's them done. Possibly a bit too long. It's definitely going to be out of the way of that. Last thing you want is your gear linkage popping your water hose. So I'm happy with them. Which means I've got the return to do, which I'm probably going to leave until tomorrow. Because it's not going to be getting cold and it's raining. Cool. I've also got this cool turbo blanket. Um, I've just rested it on there. Obviously, it's got springs that are in the bag there. Attach top to the bottom to clip it on. That will also help with a bit of the under bonnet temperatures and means I can run the pipes. You know, it doesn't matter too much if they slightly touch things because it should help it. So that's pretty good. Quite happy with the way this is coming together so far. Once I get that oil return done, that's pretty much all the turbo parts done apart from the vacuum lines which will be one of the next jobs and then we'll have to fit the intercooler in there it's probably worth mentioning actually as I was just test fitting this pipe yesterday but I'm taking it back off and it's worth PTFE taping all these unions because they are slightly tapered 
so that should hopefully stop any oil leaks. Um, I didn't do it yesterday because, as I say, I was just sort of putting it together to see where things go. But because this is now going to be permanent and fitted properly, um, I'm taking it back off and attaching the PTFE to. Dead cheap stuff anyway. And you just wrap around those threads and then you put the thread back in, threaded part back in. You can see you there. Zoom out, there we go. Right, so I'm doing the oil return pipe now, uh, which is AN10. And of course, I ain't got spanners that big, so use mole grips and it marks them. But I ain't paying the fortune for the alloy spanners for the pipes because they're an absolute ridiculous price. And to be honest with you, it's an oil return. Who really cares if it's got marks on it? So it's got marks on it. I'm happy enough with it. Right, so there's the return pipe dangling, loosely dangling in place. That needs to go on there. Now, some genius, which would be me, has got this car jacked up on an angle. So when I loosen that, oil's going to come flying out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to be really quick, if I can, get that loose. And I'm going to use this old cat litter tray that I found in the back garden. And um, get that loose and then fire that straight on hand tight so I don't lose too much oil. Because that should be perfect, really. I think even the angle past the drive shaft looks good. So I'm happy enough with that pipe. So let's go make a mess. That might come out, I might be lucky. Oh, fucking hell. Yeah, not much. Right, so there you go, that is the oil return. That's now coming up there next to the feed pipe. Put a mark on there. And we're gonna chop that. And then that should line up with that, in theory, using this 45 degree joiner. This is the theory anyway. So now, because my friend from work, Jim, who watches these videos, hi Jim, um, he loves this, so I'm gonna use the junior hacksaw again. There you go. I mean, luckily, those marks will be hidden by the amazing Shanghai Turbo. So that's all good. Which can now get fitted for the final time, hopefully. And that's that bit done. So under there, the oil feed, water line, down there water line, sorry that's all return, oil return, oil feed, I've rested the wastegate on, everything's bolted up, all solid, that side is complete, I haven't zip tied these in yet, well I want them, just, just in case, because I haven't put those clips on there either yet, um, and that's us, that'll be the end of this part, so that's the oil feed, oil return, the water pipe's done, side. That's the end of part four. Yeah, four, I think, four. Um, and today we've done, basically done the, the water pipes and the oil pipes for the turbo. So how much does this cost today? So first off, we've got the oil return fitting on the bottom of the turbo, um, like the little union silver bit, that was 10 pound. Then we've got the water banjos on the turbo, um, either side, or one either side. They were AN6 banjo bolts with uh, the little fittings on them. They were 30 pounds for the pair. Then for the feed, there's a one mil oil restrictor, and that was 11 pounds. And then the feed line itself was 30 pounds. Um, then, not really necessary, but I bought a turbo blanket, that was 40 pounds. Um, and then there is the AN10 fittings and pipe, which was a kit, that came with like assorted ends, there's a variety of them, there's like 90s, 180s, 45s, straights, all sorts of stuff. Uh, that came to £59, but I'll use some of those for other bits, so that's all right with that. And then again, with the AN6 pipe and fittings, that was £46. Um, I'll be using some of that pipe for the, uh, we call it brake booster hose, and also hopefully for the feed from the manifold to the little vacuum manifold I've got. So that's fair enough. Um, I've got plenty of spare ends as well. Uh, and I think that's it. So the total for today was 226, um, which puts the entire conversion rolling total so far at 2257. Um, yeah, it's all right, innit? So I don't know what I'll be doing next. I'll either be doing fuel lines or start looking at the intercooler. I'm not sure which way around I'm going to do it yet. We'll see. But anyway, thanks for watching.